God this morning. She mentioned in one of those songs. I thank God for the songs this morning that, that God is faithful. Amen. I'm thankful that we have a God who is faithful. Amen. Matter of fact, the Word of God says He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? Yeah. Big sin, small sin, all sin. He can cleanse you from all unrighteousness, Amen. my dear friend. You may be here this morning and you may say, well, Brother Byrne, I've sinned a lot this week. I've sinned quite a bit. He's able to forgive you of that. Yes. He's able to make you a fit subject for the kingdom of God. Yes. He's the only one who can. Amen. I'm glad for the day when He took a miserable wretch like me way back there in 2001. Someone who was fit for hell. And by His matchless grace and His love that He showed me when I was yet unworthy, He made me a fit subject for the kingdom of God. Yeah. I couldn't do it. You couldn't do it for me. Some other preacher couldn't do it. But this man called Jesus. Yes. Yes. Amen. He can do it. And He did it for me. And He can do it for you. Amen. He is faithful. Yes. He is Faithful. Let's give him some praise this morning. I praise God for the service thus far. I thank God that we have a God, as we said earlier, a God who speaks. He's a God who speaks. He's given us His Word. I love the Word of God. It is our infallible rule of faith and practice. I like some of these verses. We've been studying some of the book of Hebrews lately. Some of these verses are unpopular verses. But I love the Word of God. Even when it speaks to things that are not popular to you and I, it's still true. Yes. God's Word is still true. One example would be in Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 25, it says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And I know a lot of people today would like to just rip that right out of the Bible. And then we have a passage of Scripture over in 2 Timothy chapter number 1 and verse number 7 which says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I don't want people today to just like to take that verse and rip that right out of the Bible. But God speaks. Amen. God has spoken. Yes. And we need to be a people to listen. Amen. Amen. Yes. Now that was scrap paper. You see, those verses are still in my Bible. They've not been taken out. They've not been removed. They're still there. Yep. And I thank God for a God who has spoken. Yes. And we need to be a people who listen. She sang in one song this morning about being born again. We need to be born again. Amen. That's the only way you're going to make it safely from this world to heaven Amen. is to be born again Amen. by the grace of God. That's what... Jesus said to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Yeah. Nicodemus came and said, Master, how can a man be born when he's old? Just paraphrasing, is he going to, what's he going to do? Enter his mother's womb the second time and be born? Jesus said, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Yeah. Marvel not that I say unto you, ye must be born again. I'm thankful this morning. I've been thinking a lot about this church. And I'm very blessed that God has allowed me to be a part of this church since 2007. And my prayer is that God would bless us with many more years according to His will. We understand He's in control of that. But I thank God to know that this, this church, the free gift gospel mission, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that according to the Word of God, 
that we are a part of a church that is orthodox in our understanding and view of the fundamentals of the Christian faith. Amen. Amen. Yes. We are a Bible book by, by every standard. By every standard, this is a Bible-believing New Testament church that is orthodox in its views of the foundational principles of the Christian faith. I thank God for that. We don't have all of our theology just right here. Amen? We don't have everything just perfect. But this is a church that is orthodox. This is a church that is evangelical. This is a church that believes that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. And there is no other, no other hope for this world except the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That is the only message as we've said it time and time and time again. Down through the years, and I believe it bears repeating this morning, that the gospel is the only message that has eternal benefit for mankind. And that's the message that this world so desperately needs today. And I am going to go some other way. I had figured on saying something else this morning, but I just want to take just a few minutes here. I don't know how, how much longer we'll be. It may be short. It may be not short, uh, but uh, I want to share with you this morning just a few distinctives that this church holds to. Just a few distinctives of the free gift gospel mission. And this is important because this lines up with Scripture. One of them is, as we've already stated, Jesus Christ is the only way. Amen. 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 You can read that in John chapter 14. Amen. Many of you know the verse in John 14 and 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Thank you, Lord. If you want to try, my dear friend, this morning to get to heaven some other way besides Jesus, you've punched your ticket to hell. There is no other way. There is no other way. It's Jesus Christ, my dear friend, or nothing. He is the way. He meant what He said. I am the way. Not one of many ways. I am the only way. Yes. Jesus Christ is the only way. That's what we believe here at this church. We're not going to make it to heaven through Muhammad or Buddha or Joseph Smith or Charles Taz Russell or Dr. Phil or Oprah or, or Colin Kaepernick or, or anybody else. Jesus. Amen. Jesus Christ, my dear friend is the one who's going to get us from this life to glory. Only Him. Only Him. This church believes that the Bible is our infallible rule of faith and practice. We believe that the Bible is infallible. Amen. It is inerrant. Yes. Amen. Amen. What does that mean, preacher? It means this. It is impossible for the Word of God to be wrong. Amen. 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 It is impossible for the Word of God to be in error. It is impossible for the Word of God to be false. That's right. The Bible is true, my dear friend. It stands the test of time. There's nothing that could come up against the Word of God that we might determine by which whether or not the Word of God is true because there is no other foundation, there is no other standard higher than the Word of God. God has spoken and His Word is like a two-edged sword. That's what the Hebrew author said. Amen? Yeah, amen. The Word of God is quick and powerful. It's alive. It's quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints of the morrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. God knows the frame of a man, my dear friend. Yeah. He knows the very hairs on your head. He's got them numbered. Yeah. And He knows your thoughts from afar off. His Word is true. And His Word is penetrating and His Word is life-giving. Yes, amen. That's why Peter said this is the engrafted Word that's able to save souls today. Yes, amen. There's no other Word that can save souls today. Only the Word of God. We hold to the distinction of the Holy Trinity here at this church. One God who eternally exists 
in three distinct co-equal and co-eternal persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yes. We hold to the Trinity, my dear friend. Now, you don't have to have a perfect understanding of the Trinity. I don't know anyone who does. You don't have to have a perfect knowledge of it. But when it comes to the truth of the Word of God, and when it comes to what is essential concerning the Christian faith, the Trinity is at the top of the list. Yep. Amen. Amen. This church is a Trinitarian church. Why? Because that's what the Bible teaches. Yes. That's what the Word of God puts forth. The Word of God calls the Father God. The Word of God calls Jesus Christ the Son God. The Word of God calls the Holy Spirit God. They are all God, one in essence, three in person. And we've said before here at this church, and it's been brought up over the years, how could one equal three and three equal one? That's a mathematical impossibility. Well, that's a category error. God is one in the God category, but He's three in the person category. Amen. Yeah. Jesus prayed in John chapter 17, Father, if it be thy will, restore unto me the glory that I had with you before the world was. Yeah, right. So there we see in eternity past, God the Father and God the Son. Quentin talked about it last week. In eternity past, they're together. We get over there in, in the book of Acts, we about chapter 5, and we see Ananias and Sapphira come forward with a possession of land for sale, yet the Bible says they kept back part of the price. And Peter said, Why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie unto the Holy Ghost? You've not lied unto men, you've lied to God. So we see all throughout the Word of God, all throughout the New Testament, the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. We believe in what's known as the hypostatic union, which is a fancy, fancy terminology uh, that just simply says that Jesus Christ, the eternal Son, was fully God and fully man. Amen. And those two natures did not intermingle, they did not intermix. How does that happen, Pastor? I don't understand it. I don't understand it either, but I believe it to be true. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Jesus Christ was fully God, fully man. He is fully God and fully man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is the truth. It's all in Scripture. Hammered out at the Fifth Ecumenical Council of Chalcedon somewhere around 450 A.D. that Christ is fully God and fully man, we have a distinction here, this church that we hold to that says that we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. Again, there's no other way. And when you're saved by the grace of God, how are we saved? We are saved by grace, through faith, and that not of ourselves, but it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. But when you're saved by the grace of God, my dear friend, you're not just going to kick back in your easy chair and not lift a finger for the glory of God in this world, but when you're saved by the grace of God, I'm talking about somebody who's truly saved, somebody whose heart has been changed, somebody who's had that heart of stone taken out and God's given them a heart of flesh, somebody that uh, uh, has, has the law of God written upon their heart, somebody who's following God is going to have some works. Amen. Yeah. And they're not going to be dead works. That's right. They're going to be living works. Because that saving faith is never alone. It's by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, but that saving faith is never alone. It's going to have some good works that come with it. Amen? You're not saved by those good works, but when you're saved, you're going to have some good works because you love Christ and you have a desire to be obedient to His Word he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's what Christian people do. They strive. We're not perfect, but we strive to obey what God 
has commanded us in His Word. Because we have a desire to see Him honored and glorified. And we have a desire because we're saying to submit to His Lordship and acknowledge Him as Lord. We believe in the resurrection. We believe that Christ rose again from the grave. Yes. He said He'd rise again, didn't He? Amen. He said He did. He said in John chapter 11, He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on Me, though He were dead, yet shall He live. Yes. Amen. And then in Revelation, He said, I am He who is alive. Amen. I was dead, but behold, I live forevermore and have the keys of death and hell. Praise God, we've got victory because Christ arose. Yeah. If Christ be not risen, our faith is vain and we are yet in our sins. These are just some Thank you, Lord. distinctions that we hold to here as an orthodox evangelical church, a New Testament Bible-believing church. And here's another one. We believe that this entire world, all the nations of the world, all the peoples of the world, should be evangelized. Amen. Amen. They should be evangelized. Yes. They need the gospel preached unto them. Amen. Amen. Right. So, therefore, this church would reject a heresy that came about somewhere around the 17th century known as hyper-Calvinism. This church would reject hyper-Calvinism that exalts the sovereignty of God overly. Now you might say, hold on a minute, Brother Bird. How can you overly exalt the sovereignty of God? If you overly exalt the sovereignty of God to the point that you exclude the responsibility of man to believe and repent, then you are in error, my dear friend. And the hyper-Calvinistic perspective would believe that the nations do not need to be, should not be evangelized. And of course we reject that here at this church. Amen? Come on somebody. Amen? Do you believe the nations should be evangelized or not? Yes. Of course they should. The nations should be evangelized. The preaching of the Word of God should go forth yes. to every creature. Why? Because it's the power of God unto salvation. You see, Paul said in Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. May we go forth and proclaim Jesus Christ who was rich but became poor that we through His poverty might be made rich. Yes. Amen. I praise His holy name today. Amen. We believe that Christ died on the cross. We believe that His work is a finished work. We believe what He said in John chapter 19 and verse number 30 when He said it is finished. We believe that the Word of God is true, that it's God-breathed, that it's theonostos. That it comes forth from God. You see, when God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses, there on the mountain, and I'll say this and we'll bring it to a close, that, that didn't originate with Moses. It came from God. Every verse in this Bible, though God used men to pin it down, God used men over the span of 1,500 years, some, what, 40 authors, to pin this Word down. And they were inspired by God. Those words did not originate with them. Right. But they came from God. Yes. Yes. And again, I'm thankful that we have a God who speaks. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1.
you've not opened your Bible, let's open Hebrews chapter 1 and we'll read this scripture. God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by His Son, whom He hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also He made the worlds. Who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as He hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said He at any time, Thou art My Son, this day have I begotten Thee. And again I will be to Him a Father, and He shall be to me a Son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let the angels of God worship him. And, the, and of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? But unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness, is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth the garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? And I like that in verse number 3 where it talks about the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person. Christ reveals God the Father. He's an exact representation, my dear friend. It's like a, an image you see on a coin that's been the superscripted there. He is that express image that exact exact representation i'm glad that god so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that christ came down to this world to reveal the father unto us and it's like we said here wednesday night as melissa comes to the piano the word of god reveals the god of the word the law of god reveals the god of the law and he's the god that we proclaim unto you today. The God who created everything. The Creator, the Potter, we're the clay. We need Him. Yeah. Amen. Why? Because we've sinned. We've rebelled against God. And we stand in need of a Savior. And God being just and righteous and holy has determined the just punishment for our sin to be eternity in a place called hell. You see, that's another one. We believe in the reality of a place called hell. And all who are unsaved will go there. And we don't want that for you. Thanks be unto God, a Savior has come, born of a virgin, lived a perfect life for 33 years. He died on that old rugged cross. He said it is finished. Finished the work that God gave him, gave him to do. They took him down, placed him in a borrowed tomb. Rolled the stone in front of the door. But that didn't hold him down. On the third day, he got up He got up victorious. He got up again victorious. Sent it to the right hand of God. And he's coming back at the time appointed. And we need to be ready. Are you ready? We need to be. Lest today be the day that we stand before God that we meet our maker. May Christ and His precious blood be applied to your heart and life, my dear friend. May your sins be washed away. But in order for that to happen, you've got to repent and believe the gospel. You've got to look to Christ and Him alone. For there is no other way. He said in Romans 10, 13, 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you don't know Him today in a saving way, call upon Him today. He can save you. He can set you free. He can make you a new creature. Call upon Him today. My dear friend, if you don't know Him, call upon Him now. If you're here today saved by the grace of God and you have concerns and needs in your life or situations taking place and you just simply want God to be glorified in your life and you'd like to pray and talk to God and speak to Him and ask for His help and His wisdom and His guidance and His strength. Friend, you could come at this very moment have a little talk with Jesus. Maybe somebody would like to do that right now. God bless this dear brother and sister. Would there be others today? Would there be others? We're going to pray. You just mind the Lord, my dear friend. If you need to come, come ahead. God bless you, sister. God bless these two sisters coming. Would there be others? Obey the Lord. Lord, we come in the name of Jesus Christ. God for your many blessings. We thank you, God, for this church. We thank you, God, for these precious believers who are here this morning. I pray, God, that you would be glorified in their lives. We thank you, Lord, for the songs that were sung, the worship of God that went forth today, the word of God that was read from Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 10. 2 Timothy chapter 1. God, I pray that you would help us to be reminded each day because we need it often in this life that you're not a God who gives the spirit of fear but the spirit of, a, of power and of love and of a sound mind. And we praise you today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.